Welcome, loved ones. Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for following and sharing and liking our videos. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button right now. My name is Reverend Penelope Stewart. You can follow Chemistry on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Today is going to be a really short video on a uh, really short video book review on a really short book. That's why it's going to be short. This is a really short book, but it's a really good book. It's a really good book. Uh, this book is Spellcraft, Hexcraft, and Witchcraft. A Handbook of Do-It-Yourself Enchantments for Good and Evil. Uses of the Occult Materials Explained and Their Secret Powers Revealed. All right. And don't don't be fooled because this book is good, you know, if you're just getting into hoodoo and you're you don't know what these terms are and you don't know what what these things are used for, then this is a good book. It's just 63 pages. I think I paid maybe 5 or 6 bucks for this book on Amazon. It uh, it wasn't expensive at, at all. When I got to reading it, when I first read it, it, it looked more like Wicca. It looked more like the occult when I first got it because it talks about the secrets to abracadabra and gives you a formula to abracadabra. And I thought, okay, that's that's not what I'm trying to do. You see that she goes in and, and kind of gives you the secrets to abracadabra and letting you know how to use use abracadabra. Okay? And it's, she got some interesting facts here because you can spell abracadabra back, backwards and it still spells abracadabra. Either way you spell it, backwards or forward, it still is going to say abracadabra. I thought that was something. I thought that was neat. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> then she talks about the different things that they use in hoodoo, which is like coon bones, damnation water, and she gives you particular definition to it. For example, damnation water, symbolic water used in various spells, rituals of revenge. It can be added to any crossing powders to strengthen, strengthen their effects or sprinkle it on the sidewalk in front of the foe's home as you chant. And she gives you a chant that you should say when you sprinkle it. Let's see. Then she talks about Black cat bone. You'll hear that used a lot in hoodoo, the black cat bone. A legendary powerful luck charm include one in your gambling bag along with John the Conqueror root, a bad heart, mandrake root, and a pair of lotus stone. Just before going out to play, sprinkle the bag with gambler's oil and carry it in your pocket during the Excuse me, during the game. So she goes into details of explaining things. That's what I like about this book because when I first got into Udu, there's a lot of things that I didn't know. And I was reading these books and I was like, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? And then when I got this book, I was like, oh, she kind of breaks it down. What is it used for and what it is? So if you're just getting your feet wet and you want to know what things are, are, this is a great book for that. She goes in to explain Magic mirror. I thought that was interesting. Let me just read this because I thought this was interesting. I never heard anyone talk about magic mirror this way. Uh, the There are at least three different types of magic mirrors. The first is that you use by that's used by serious practitioners. A vessel filled clear clear water drawn from a well or river. The magician has the subject place the hand outspread palm down in the water for a few minutes while they both concentrate on the problem, question, or subject at hand. The subject's hand is then removed and the magician stares into the water from which he receives a vision which he interprets to the subject. I don't like that term magician. I, I just don't like that term, you know. It just it doesn't make it seem realistic when you're using that term. That's just my, my opinion. Maybe my opinion alone. Uh, another type of mirror is ink. In a hollow, a left hand of the sorcerer, he walks around the seated inquirer several times, always in a clockwise direction, 
repeating his own secret chants or incantation, and at intervals has the inquirer look into the ink. After a few minutes, small ripples pass over the surface of the ink, and when these have died down, a scene makes itself visible to the magician who reads it to the questioner. The third type, and the most used one, is the commercially available cosmetic type mirror, generally round in shape and about six inches in diameter. Many are double-sided with actual reflection on one side and magnified reflection on the other. This mirror can be used for developing one's powers or of concentration, increasing sensitivity for psychic growth. Choose a quiet time and place the mirror so that you can sit before it, comfortable and relaxed. Gaze directly into it, placing all your mind's forces into an image of yourself as confident, sensitive, powerful, person you wish to be. Daily concentration along with one's innate talents can, can heighten one's awareness to the point that he can see the future, read the thoughts of those who are far away, and gain many other psychic talents and abilities. These benefits do not come easily or quickly, but with un, un, unqualified determination. Unqualified, what does that mean? unqualified determination and daily practice improvement in one sensitivity to those forces beyond the realm of reality should come surely and steadily after just a few weeks this magic mirror can be used on more elemental level for making wishes come true write your wish on the mirror with a soft crayon or lipstick at night before retiring Cover the mirror with clean white handkerchief or a piece of cloth. In the morning before dawn, remove the writing. Do this nightly for seven days or until your wish is fulfilled. You know, like I said, she goes in detail, talks about magnetic sand, mule tooth, peace water, peace water, a blessed water used in many rituals to draw serenity, calm, and tranquility. Rock salt, shark tooth, witch ball, witch sabbath, vesta powder, war water, tools. Like I said, she comes from a witch point of view, like making it wicked. But the more you look in this book and you go through it, it's so who doing voodoo. It's so who doing voodoo. She talks about candle burning. She just gives you a general description. I don't think she goes into too many spells. She gives you candle symbolism as far as color, what, what the colors are used for. She talks about astral candle. Then she talks about the different candles, which you heard me talk about in the Hoodoo Candle Magic Book. She talks about the cat candle and, and goes into definition what it's good for. Cross candles. And she's very thorough with explaining what they're used for. Seven knob candles, image candles, double action candles, triple action candles. She doesn't just name them. She goes in to tell you what they are used for. Again, that's why I like this book. All right. Really good book. I thought this was interesting. I've never worked with Muppets or dolls, you know. She shows you how to make your own doll. I've never worked with them. I'm more of a candle girl myself. I like candles, you know. But if you're interested in that, this is a good book. You know, she gives really good details on how to construct that. Construct that. Let's go on, move on here. There's a lot of condition work in here. You know, she teaches you uh, for crossing and hexing to find a lover, to break a hex or spell, to win a court case, to keep a, a lover faithful, to get rid of an enemy, to attract money. You know, there's many, many uh, conditions working here to stop rumors or gossip against you. You know, but you know, that's a good, this is a good one to stop, but you can also do it on crossing as well. And then you can do some shut up work where you could just, uh, place them in 
a refrigerator or a freezer. But, you know, you can get as creative as you want with this. You don't have to follow everything by verbatim, all right? So I, I'll have to put that out there. Just This gives you ideas on, on how to, you know, work your craft, all right? This is going to make you more creative. Uh, then she talks about coffins and coffin nails. I thought that was very interesting. Let's 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 dig in here, because I, I, I want to read about this. A modern spell to cause an enemy to go mad is done with voodoo doll, a coffin nail, and some some black arts oil and fire. The doll should be carefully labeled with the foe's name. On the first evening of the full moon, place the coffin nail in the bottle of the black arts oil, or pour some of the oil in any small container and place the nail in it so that it is fully covered and can soak well. Leave the nail for nine nights and on the 10th night, pound the nail into the doll's head. It is alleged that before the next full moon's coming, the victim will be cursed with severe headaches, faulty memory, and deep depression. Wow. Wow, that's scary. Whoa. The black coffin can be placed in running water. I guess this is how you work with coffins because you'll see those coffins too. These little black coffins, people work with those coffins as well. Let me see if she talks about that. It said another protective use for coffin nails is to have one always soaking in the bath oil and bath salts, which you use, or tie a nail in a handkerchief or any small cloth and place it in the tub while you run the hot water. After the bath is full, take the nail out and keep it for reuse each time you bathe. Many evil forces can be washed away by this method of using the nails. That's something new to me. See, it's so many ways to do this stuff. That's why it's good to like research because you have so many options. Uh, the black coffin can be placed in running water anchored with a stone. As the box, box rots away, your enemy should do the same. When the coffin is completely destroyed, the victim will die. Uh, yikes. You know, so there's some black magic work in here too, dealing with some coffins. And I know you probably, like I said, like I just mentioned before, you'll see those little black coffins being for sale too. Like she said, the coffins are usually two to four inches long, but there is no definite requirement for the size. Small, empty match boxes can be used or similar containers. The coffin should contain a tiny doll, which has been pierced with pins, pieces of burnt candles, generally black ones, and some graveyard dirt, and vile smelling herbs. Wow. You know, so she's telling you how to do all of that. I think the most intriguing part about this was the conjure bags. She talks about the conjure bags and what to put in them and whatever you put in them should be an odd number. Like if you put in, you put one ingredients in there, three ingredients in there, five ingredients in there, seven, never even numbers of ingredients, always odd numbers. She teach you how to make an attracting love bag, wishing bag, luck and gambling bag, hex bag, power protection bag, health bags, but the thing that she didn't mention in here is you got to feed these bags. And I've, I've read that in another, I don't know where I read it at, but you have to feed these bags because the more you feed it, the more power and potent that the bag becomes for you. I think that was, we could read that in a hoodoo or voodoo book. I read so many books, I can't even, I was reading that somewhere in a hoodoo or voodoo book somewhere, but you have to feed the bag because that's what powers it. So you either feed it, you feed it with oil. I think they use some type of oil or some type of special water you got to feed it with. Uh, graveyard dirt. She tells you how to use uh, different ways you can use graveyard dirt. You know, and you'll see graveyard dirt on sale in many places. And you and I've asked myself, how many ways can you use graveyard dirt? Well, she tells you the, the various ways how to use graveyard dirt. And like I said, this is a good book. She goes into defining stones, how to use them in a conjure, wanga, gris gris bags. She goes in very details on how to use all different types of stones. 
All right. And then she talks about soaps, different floor washes and soaps. And like I said, she tried to make this book seem like it was, it was, uh, you know, a cult book, but it's more of a hoodoo feel. Do not be fooled by the, the title of this book. This is a really good book. I hope you enjoyed this book review. I hope it was insightful for uh, for uh, for you, you know. And I recommend it if you're just getting into hoodoo and you don't, you know, you don't know a couple of things. Get this book. Like I said, thank you for being here with me tonight. Light and love. May the ancestors be with you.